great players, great caliber. But what is the coolest in chips? Aaron Zhang going up against Asian Park. Out the gate right away, Muradon restricted. Next to Chi Yu, as we get to see the restricted from Aaron coming out as well, the Zamazenta next to that Rillaboom. Rillaboom hitting the field here is fantastic because right away, you're going to get this opportunity to right over the terrain, have that grassy terrain out instead. Yeah, it's a really nice play here from Aaron, having that fake out here to disrupt either of these Pokemon on Seijin's side of the field. The other, the argument is, which one do you choose to fake out and do you commit to that because is there a Phorograph in the back? If you go for that fake out, then the Phorograph switching in, it's going to be a wasted turn and you kind of want to avoid that. The other thing is the Chi Yu has that Ghost Trastalization, so it could commit the Trastalization there to get some, you know, a heat wave, an overheat onto these two Fire Week Pokemon. So lots for Aaron to consider here. And it's really one of those turns where Seijin feels like with his choice Pokemon out on the field, he's got a lot more offensive pressure going into this turn. Right away, Rillaboom's not going to be sticking around for a fake out. We're going to see the swap and a little bit of what Aaron has in the back here for the team. And it's going to be this Entei. Terrestrialization is going to be the way to kick off this match right from the get-go, and we're going to be eyeing up the Chi Yu. So instead of that Terra Fairy on the Maridon, making sure that, hey, if there is a fake out that was coming this way, would do absolutely nothing. Yeah, the one thing that you could say that Station could do is maybe go for that Heat Wave and then a Draco Meteor into the Zamazenta. It covers the Terrestrialization, but we just see a Protect come out from that side of the field and a big overheat here into the Entei and wow. taken. They're doing massive damage for a resisted attack as well. Yeah, considering it's an Entei, that is a lot of damage from the overheat. Of course, you are going to have that special attack drop, so that's going to be something that eh, the GU might be eyeing up a swap sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think getting it off the field as soon as possible, but you might want to keep it out now just to try and get some additional damage onto that Zamazenta that's on our inside of the field. Nice protect there to get around any damage, but Entei coming in, taking a lot of damage unnecessarily, and, and it pretty awkward position as well now because if the, the Volt Switch comes out from the Maridon, you've got to think that that's probably in range of going down. So do you switch back into the Rillaboom to kind of soak that up, have that fake out once again to support the Zamazenta, but if you're doing that, you're leaving that Zamazenta kind of open here. You know that the Draco Meter is not a threat though, so Aaron does have the option here to maybe go for that Dragon Trastalization, get some, you know, body slam damage into that Maridon, start chipping away at from his side of the field. Oh, I think that's what we might just see here as we're going to be pressing the go button on Aaron's side of the field as well. Zamazenta, that Terra Dragon. Terra Dragon is always such a cool defensive terrestrialization considering against this fire, water, grass core. It's going to be resisted. does mean that later on you could be susceptible to that Maridon, but for now you know you are good and this overheat targeted into is going to be doing negligible damage. Yes, yeah, a really nice defensive terrestrialization here from Aaron and knowing what the, the, the moves were locked into from the Maridon the Chi Yu had a free time doing that. You do see that Volt Switch into the Entei. Does take it down, doing enough damage. And then that Maridon going to be in the back for later on. Seijin can utilize that once this Chi Yu has done the work that he needs to. Not really getting much use out of it now. And the Zamazenta has to take a turn. Where does it go? Probably that Body Slam into what was that Maridon slot. Yeah, this will be our first opportunity to see what else Seijin has brought to this match. Here's what it is. The Furgraph that you called out could be a great one considering there's something a little bit more on that defensive end. I am still personally hoping I'm patchy, but there is still a lot of really strong Pokemon that he can have. Even find something like this Iron Hand could be great. Time to see what it is, though. It will be that Furgraph, so no priority. Oh, but that's cool. a lot of damage still. Yeah, that's a huge amount of damage there. And n because normally with the electric terrain set up, you would have that electric seed activated. You'd probably take that attack a lot better. But fortunately for Aaron, he's just positioning these pieces very well. See so the grassy terrain on the field, the Rillaboom now in the back. And he's got the ability to bring that in just to get rid of that electric terrain whenever he chooses to. I think if you're Seijin, you've got to try and get that Maridon back onto the field and threaten the Zamazenta with a Draco Meteor because of now that Dragon Terra type. And you've got to try and get that Chiyu off the field as well because really it's not very effective at all. It's launched two attacks out. It's going to be minus four special attack now. So you want to remove that off the field. This could be an opening for Aaron to maybe fish for either a, a knockout onto the Frograph with that body press into that slot or double target down into the Chiyu, expecting maybe something like the Maridon to come back onto the field. I definitely wouldn't hate getting rid of the Ferrigarath. Having that helping hand um, to be able to enable your partner Pokemon is not fun. Or even the foul plays, considering Aaron really only has Pokemon that are 
like attack heavy, that's something that can do a decent little amount of damage. And if you get rid of that Phrygraph, you do unlock that ability for your own priority. And when you have this Chen Pao with this Sucker Punch, when you have this Rillaboom with that Grassy Glide, it's something that can start getting picking off those KOs a little bit early, later on, especially too, if that Chiyu comes in fresh later, having already Trashlized Ghost type, it would not appreciate a Sucker Punch. Yeah, it's a really good knot there to make, especially when that Chiyu comes back in, you remove that Iron Tail, you're freed up with that Sucker Punch to deal with that way Let's more go. effectively. But here it is, the Fat Jirusu out into the field, taking a big <laughs> critical hit throw chop though for its trouble. <laughs> That is going to be the, the focus has broken with the Rocky Helmet recoil on that swap in. Frigoraph It's going to be going down. So now Station gets a free swap into something else. And now this could be an opportunity to bring that EU back in since you do have that redirection and you would still have that full special attack back. Or you can eye up throw that Murad on and just go for some heavy damage, especially now that you've gotten that Trasalization out of Aaron Zamazenta. Yeah, we were talking about the Fergraf going off the field, that Armor Tail going away, and then the, the Sucker Punch being an option. But the problem is now you've got the Pachirisi with the Follow Me, so you can't really utilize that attack anymore. Murad on coming back onto the field, going to set that electric terrain up, and it does pose a big threat to that Zamazenta now with that Draco Meteor because of the Dragon Terror typing. Uh, the Chen Pao as well, it has had its focus sash broken, so not as kind of secure as it would have been normally. Maraidon threatens some big damage onto both of these targets. Yeah, and this Maraidon, notably, since we are seeing the swap over into something like the Dazzling Gleam, we don't have this possibility of something that could just be hitting the whole field here. So you can be committing to something like a Dazzling Gleam instead, but you would have to be watching out for the potential of a wide guard over on Aaron's end. You would be dealing super effective damage into both, and you would make sure the Zamazenta is then not threatening damage on this turn, but that's still a big call to me. Yeah, and did you just commit with the Chen Pao to try and remove the Pachirisu, try and remove that Follow Me, so then it frees up your options where you're attacking, you're attacking into, you don't have to worry about any of those redirections. Gonna see that electric terrain going away once again, the Rillaboom hitting the field, and taking away a little bit of the power from that Maraidon as the Chen Pao just protects you. And gonna see what the Maraidon locks into, which is gonna be the most important thing. Little Pachi going for that Follow Me, pulling any attacks, none coming out this time, and it is that Draco Meteor. Really nice switch here from Aaron. Minus two though, really been taking a little bit of damage for its trouble, but a really worthwhile one. Yeah, bringing in the Assault Vest Pokemon. Now at negative two, the Maraidon would have to just manually swap to be able to get that back. And that's where something, that's where Aaron can find advantage into this. With that critical hit on the swap and the battery who has taken a lot of damage. And even if you protect and swap, you can just kind of double into the other slot and you'd have to make so much headway with that Maraidon back going on forward. So a little bit of a dangerous spot and even eyeing up something like a fake out into it since it is a choice lock Maraidon a little bit tough. Your Trajan has to tread really carefully here. Yeah, and depending on how both trainers have trained their Pokemon, there could be a speed tie here between the Chen Pao and the Maraidon. Chen Pao outspeeds it, probably got enough in the tank to be able to remove it with something like an Icicle Crash. So Seijin has to be very careful here. You haven't got the freedom to switch something in to kind of soak up that hit. You've got the Chiyu in the back that you really probably want to utilize later on this game. Fake out coming out into that Maraidon. All right, so that's going to be the fake out. Follow me. So the Maraidon, it won't be able to act, but it won't get AO'd at this moment. His throat shot from the Chien Pao is going to eliminate the poor little Pachirisu once and for all. A little bit more Rocky Helmet recoil. And Seijin Park now down to his final two Pokemon. The little round of applause for the Pachirisu. <laughs> <laughs> and a nice turn here from Aaron, and he's really taking a, a lot of control of this match, making it very difficult for Seijin to get kind of that momentum swing that he's looking for. But there is hope that Chiyu coming back onto the field. It is pretty healthy, of course, now. It doesn't have that support network of that follow me, the Phrygraph, so it is going to be susceptible to that Sucker Punch, and it's pretty easy for Aaron now to just say, okay, locking in Sucker Punch into that Chiyu. That's probably enough to pick up the knockout. Maraidon, it's down to minus two now. The Draco Meteor is probably not going to get the Rillaboom, so you're pretty safe going for something like a U-turn into that slot to allow a free switch into the Zamazen to the next turn. Once you've dealt with the Chiyu, you've got a pretty easy route to being able to deal with that, that Maraidon ride on which would be down to minus four with that Zamazenta. Make it official, Sucker Punch. Chiyu is down for the count and only one Pokemon remaining here in this game. One between these two trainers all down this negative two special attack ride on. 
Grassy Glide is just going to be that little bit of chip, not very effective, but slowly but surely. And as well, the Draco Meteor miss. If it wasn't, if it wasn't completely <laughs> sealed from that moment, well, it sure is now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That seals the deal, I think, for Aaron. But so well played. Aaron has could just control this match from the, the get-go, really, with these well-timed terrestrialization, making it very difficult for Sejan to get kind of any foothold in this game. The Sucker Punch there can be enough for Aaron to go 1-0 up in this round two set. Really, really well played. And we talked at the beginning of the match about how... Game, Aaron just not giving him a foot in and really keeping the pressure going. So maybe we do see something different as we get into this game two. All right, from the get-go, Ferragraf's going to be leading the charge. So no potential priority option coming out from Aaron. So Sucker Bunch off of the table. A little swap up from him as well. We saw the Rillaboom led from the get-go last time. Now it's going to be Chan Pout next to that Zamazenta. Of course, the Zamazenta can start in huge damage here and does get that defense raise for later on in the match when we see Sage and kind of swap Pokemon around. Maybe a swap could be a great thing to overwrite some terrain at this point, but Aaron definitely has options. Yeah, a lot of options here, and I think not leading with the Rillaboom is really smart because it gives you that flexibility now where you have got the, the choice to just preserve that focus slash on the chain power if you'd like to switch that out get the Rillaboom on the field weaken that Mariah on and then go after that Frigograph which could be a real problem the longer it sticks around it really would limit what you're able to do with some of these Pokemon if you have got the Entei in the back and the Chen Pao if you want to use those priority moves later on in this game then getting rid of that Pokemon is probably the the first point of call for Aaron so maybe going after it now would be very useful the one thing you would say different about that game one is that it has had that psychic uh, the electric seed activated so the photographs defense will be a lot better gonna be able to take those and um, the body presses much better than it did in that la in that first game it will but that's where the the sort of ruin from the Chien Pao is definitely gonna try and counteract that just a little bit and the super effective hit is making that electric seed look not that great taking it down to already have health Big hit coming out from the Maridon. It's not going to completely eliminate the Zamazenta. That's a hefty amount of damage. And I love the Volt Switch instead because you get this damage, but now an opportunity to pivot and bring something else in. Yeah, no, uh, it's a nice play from Sage and you're preserving the Maridon for a little bit later, trying to get some utility out of this Ferrigarath here. You've got the Armor Tail active, so preventing that Sucker Punch. But I, I like the play from Iron. I think it's very brave. He's not really worried about getting knocked out with either of these Pokemon on the field. He's got the Focus Sash and the Champion. Pow. He's got the Zamazenta there. It's a pretty well defensive Pokemon. And utilizing these two to remove that big threat where you would imagine, yeah, body press into that slot, removing it, taking it off the table. Even if Ferragraph is going down on this turn, the Maridon going out, you get that good amount of damage and you bring the Chi Yu in. If you bring the Maridon back in at this point, well, we just talked about the Sword of Ruin. Well, let's talk about this Chi Yu and that Beads of Ruin. Those two Pokemon are gonna be dealing a lot of damage, and with that Choice Scarf on that Chi Yu, would have access to spread damage attacks. That's where Aaron then has to play that game of, do I commit to this wide guard or not? But that could be a lot of damage. It won't even be the Murad on this turn. The Bacharisu has returned. Yeah, coming onto the field, gonna have utility in that follow me. Just giving that protection that the Chi Yu needs because then it means that you don't need to commit to that terrestrialization. You keep that dark and fire typing because the Chi, uh, the Chin Pao is not really threatening you too much. There's no sacred sword on that side of the field. And the big threat from that body press, you can pull into the Pacharisu, you can get some good damage and fire back with a heat wave, which is going to do super effective damage. Probably pick up the Zamazenta and take that Chen Power down to its Sash. Also, it makes it difficult to bring the Rillaboom onto the field in this situation. So, really nice play from Sejin, kind of putting that pressure a little bit further onto Aaron to make some sort of decision here. What's at least nice from Aaron with having so many Pokemon that can protect, he can go and protect both of his Pokemon on this turn and scout out what this Chi Yu wants to do and what it locks into. If it was a heat wave, you could have clicked Wide Guard the next time around, but instead, now you got that confirmation. It is the overheat. The Pachirisu, an attempt on the offense here, Super Fang hitting into the protect. Now that your choice locked, play around that a little bit, but at the same time, an overheat can do a lot in the Samus would surely fall. Yeah, definitely fall, but you, you probably out, you know, the one thing is it's so low health at this point. Do you say, okay, well, I'm going to sacrifice my Zamazenta. I've got two Pokemon in the back. They can come in and maybe do a decent job, or do you preserve that Zamazenta? Maybe switch it out and try and get some decent damage with that Chen Pao onto the Pachirisu, onto that Chiyu. Problem doing that, if you go into the Pachirisu, you're inevitably breaking your Focus Sash because 
it has got the Rocky Helmet, so it does make it a little bit awkward. The way that Seijun is kind of positioning these Pokemon right now, making it very difficult for Aaron to kind of get that momentum swing, all that control that he had in that game one. So really well adjusted from Seijun. It's going to be the follow me coming on out. No Terra, but redirecting all of the hits, being the center of attention as if it wasn't already as Overheat from Chiyu hitting into the Chan Pao. Going to be bringing it right down to Sash. Now this Pachirisu is going to be taking a barrage of hits coming on out from both of these Pokemon, starting off with this Icicle Crash. Good chunk of damage, bringing it just down below half. The body press is going to be finishing it off. Critical hit. We're, we're not enjoying this bad Jirisu here. It will be a little bit of chip damage, but all of a sudden, Seijin down a final two. Yeah, and the nice thing about the Icicle Crash there, not a contact move. So the Chen Pao keeping that focus, Sash, although taking a overheat for its troubles. But the the Chi Yu now down to minus two, so not going to be hitting as hard for the things that are in the back for Aaron. Aaron really looking. On, on these last legs with these two Pokemon out in the field. But you've got to imagine the Chen Pao probably got the ability to get at least one Sucker Punch off, but there's, it's not really going to be very effective into that very terror typing of the Maraidon. And you're not going to be able to get much use out of the Zamazenta just because of the speed jump that Chiyu has. And even here, you don't have to get too far ahead of yourself if you don't want to. We do have the possibility, since you know it is Choice Out on the other end, to go ahead with the Double Protect and just get that confirmation. The Maraidon. Since we do have the Dazzling Gleam, it can go for these spread damage attacks as well, and you definitely don't want to be disrespectful of that. Chan Pao is going to be the one protecting on this turn as Aaron opting not to go and protect the other, but it is going to be a good call with the Chiyu first attempting to hit into that Ice Cat. Right on, Electro Drift time, hitting in to these Amazenta, already brought so low, going to take care of the other Restricted. Yeah, really nice play here, and then big knockout, taking the, the Restricted down on Aaron's side of the field, locking in with that Electro Drift. A nice play as well. I think the one thing that we would say about Aaron is he's really managing this game well in the fact that he's protecting at the right times, like you mentioned, to scout out what these choice Pokemon are locking into because once you know what they're locked into it makes a decision about switching about what you bring in at a certain time or what move you lock into a lot easier so we are going to see the NT come onto the field now and it is going to threaten with extreme speed into both of these these Pokemon whether or not Aaron decides to go for the terrestrialization here he has got it as an option though what I really like too about protecting the Chian Pao and that preservation is since we are on the attack heavy end for Eren, it is something that you can do more and more damage. So you sack off your Zamazenta, you get this fresh Entei in, Terra normal, this extreme speed is going to do a lot of damage combined there with that sort of ruin and the extreme speed coming on out. Since the rationalization already spent for Seijin, you know that Chi oh. is not going to be safe and that's going to be a clean one hit KO. That is a huge knockout onto the Chi Yu here. And like you say, that sort of ruin intact is so useful here. The Sucker Punch coming out from the Chen Pao. And I do respectable damage, not <laughs> super effective though, more resisted. And the Electro Drift coming out and return from the ride on into the NT. <laughs> it's one hit KOs across the board. I think we might be a little out of steam when we're looking at Asian's end, but the Maridon definitely putting as much of a fight as possible. It's going to be finally time for your electricity to disappear if it wasn't going to already as the Rillaboom, the fourth final Pokemon for Aaron, will finally be joining. The Assault Vest getting that grassy surge. You got Mako pressure on this turn. We can just hit whatever we want with this Chien Mao. We should be able to lock this up. Yeah, and you've got the fake out here. This is going to be really useful in preventing you from attacking this turn. It gives the Chen Pao a free turn. Going for the throw chop here. Not the most effective attack. He could lock into the Icicle Crash, but Aaron being sensible here doesn't want to take the risk of an Icicle Crash missing and allowing maybe Seijin back into this game. The Electro Drift is still a big threatening attack. It hasn't got the boost from the Electric Terrain anymore, but you still need to close this up as sensibly as possible. And exactly what Aaron's done throughout this match with the Rillaboom with that Assault Vest is going to be in a really great place to do that. The Grassy Glide's almost there, but the Throat Chop is going to be the one to seal the deal. As Aaron Zhang, the return to the big stage, is going to be claiming this set in a 2-0.